was thinking? <clears throat> I think, hey, Father, you were good. You were good. You are good. You were good. And you were merciful. And Father, you know your people. You know us much better than we know ourselves. And there are people, Father, today, we need to hear from you more than we know. Please, Father, speak. And please, Father, let us hear. Let us hear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 <coughs> out to do a Thanksgiving message. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, this, this really will sound like, man, it's all about Thanksgiving. And something will work out. Thanksgiving is coming. Yeah. It's about spiritual warfare. For uh, quite a while now, this house, people of this house have been under a demonic attack it's demonic, against your mind. Yeah. It's your mind. Sister Terry said something's very prophetic. She might not have thought it was. Talked about she got a fight. Get back to where you was at. Amen. Amen. You have to fight. That's right. There's no place for passivity in this thing. It's a battle. The battle is in your mind. The battle is for you. The enemy seeks to destroy your peace, take away your joy, mm -hmm. cause you to be unhappy. Amen. Uh, uh, probably one of the biggest things facing America right now is depression. And all that. People just are not happy. They are right there miserable. What's bad is it has invaded the church. The only people who have the hope of glory inside of them are Christ. The hope of glory. He's in us. You don't have to, I got news for you this morning. You don't have to be unhappy. You can have joy. Yeah. Unspeakable. Yeah. And full of glory. It's yours. Amen. But you're going to have to fight for it. Amen. You know, we used to have an old saying, man up. Y'all ever heard that? Man up. Yeah. Time to man up. It's time to God up. Amen. Time Amen. to God up. Amen. Time to realize who you are, that there is a God inside of you. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. So the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth finally in Jesus Christ. Have you been taught rightfully so since you were in Sunday school? That Jesus lives inside of you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So how can he ever leave you? That's right. I mean, he's always present. We learned that, right? So I want to talk to you today about gratitude as a weapon. That's gratitude right. is a weapon. And one thing I found out about miserable folks is they're not thankful folks. Matter of fact, they don't they don't see anything but their problems. Matter of fact, they can't see anything but themselves most of the time. Yeah. I told you, you want to be miserable? Think about you all the time. That's true. Make it all about you. I'm going to tell you something. Some people help people, but it's all about them. Some people minister, but it's all about them. You'll never be happy like that. Everybody say, you'll never be happy like that. You'll never be happy like you'll that. You'll never be filled with gratitude. One day a woman was rushing home from the doctor's appointment. The doctor had been somewhat delayed at the hospital. The lab work took a little longer than usual. So by the time she left the clinic, she was running quite a bit behind the schedule. She still had to pick up the prescription, pick up the children from the babysitter, and get home and make supper. All in time to make the prayer meeting at her church that evening. Everybody say she was busy. She was busy. As she began to circle the busy Walmart parking lot looking for a space, the windows of heaven were opened, as it says in Genesis, and a downpour began. While she was usually the type Usually the type to bother God, not the type to bother God with small problems. She began to pray as she turned down the road closest to the front door. Lord, you know what kind of day I've had. And there's still an awful lot to do. Could you please grant me a parking space right away? Oh, and close to the building so I don't get soaked. The words weren't even completely out of her mouth when she saw the backup lights of a car come on at the end of the road. It was the best space in the whole parking lot right next to the handicapped spots and straight out in the front door. 
she made straight for it. And as she pulled in, she said, never mind, God, something just opened up. That was funny. <laughs> You'll get no way on that. <laughs> uh, after one of the terrible battles of the Civil War, a dying Confederate soldier asked to see the chaplain. When the chaplain arrived, he supposed the young man would wish him to ask God for his recovery, but it was very different. First, the soldier asked him to cut off a lock of his hair for his mother, and then he asked him to kneel down and thank God. What more? asked the surprised chaplain. For giving me such a love. Thank God that I am a Christian. And thank God for giving me grace to die with. And thank God for the home he has promised me over there. And so the chaplain knelt down by the dying man. And in his prayer, he had not a single petition to offer. But only praise and gratitude. How many of you have been under a constant attack and feel like the enemy in your mind for a long time? Some of you raise your hands, some of you don't. Amen. Some of you just lie. I don't want to do that. <laughs> You're under attack. I know. I know you are. It's been unrelenting for a month. How do I know that? Because I'm the pastor of this house. That's how I know that. Because the enemy's attacking my mind. And I'm not a person that that happens to all the while. I'll be honest with you. I'm just not. And I thank God for it. I'm just not a depressed person. But he has come to me with all kinds of stuff. And it's mainly been to help me be aware of what you're going through. Okay? It's just, I'm, don't pick up on me, so that's the way he deals with me. He may not deal with you that way. Thank God he don't, but he, that's the way he deals with me. And it helps me know what you're going through. And I'm going to tell you the quickest way out of where you're at. And it's a battle, it's going to be a fight, but it's the way, it's the quickest way out. Quickest way out. Everybody say, who was the quickest way out? Who was the quickest way out? Now you want to maintain it once you get out. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, got a lot of scriptures. They're all short. Giving thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Everybody want to know what the will of God is? In all of your circumstances, give thanks. Give thanks. Amen. Amen. That means when the circumstances aren't exactly what you want them to be. Give thanks. Okay. It, didn't say, hey, it didn't say give thanks for what puts you in the circumstances. It said give thanks in the circumstances. In the middle of the battle, you got to be in the thank God. Yeah. Amen. We talk a lot about praise. Praise ain't nothing but thanksgiving. That's right. It's being thankful. Mm -hmm. Being thankful. Ephesians 5 20 says, Giving thanks always. How often do you give thanks? Always. always. And for everything. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Everything that comes from God is good. Everybody say, everything that comes from God is good. Everything that comes from God is perfect. That's what God said. Now, thank you much. Psalm 50, 14. <clears throat> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. What's a sacrifice of thanksgiving? It's simply an offering. Instead of going to God with all of your petitions all the time, and most of your petitions are very selfish. They're all about you. They're not about anybody. Else. They're all about you. God, I got this going on. God, I need this. God, I need that. God, 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 God. I need, I need, I need, I need. You don't like it when your kids do you that way all the time. God don't like it when you do them that way all the time. You need to stop and thank God for what he's done for you. Amen. 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 He's done a lot for us. We need to be very grateful to him for it. Amen. We need to sit down and make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And then don't look at it as a sacrifice. Oh, I don't feel like giving thanks to God. No, that's what you need to repent of. Yes, amen. <laughs> no. The sacrifice is bringing something acceptable. Sac How many of you know God don't accept every sacrifice? I've heard this. This is a terrible, and, and I've heard it in this church, and I've probably said it myself, but we need to correct it. I've heard people say a sacrifice of praise is when you don't feel like doing it. Let me tell you something. That sacrifice is not acceptable to God. God, has, God says there are good, acceptable, and perfect gifts that are acceptable. There's things that are not acceptable. The, 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 
the Israelis in the Old Testament were bringing sacrifices to God, and God said, take them to your governor and see if he'll take them. I'm not taking them. He said, you bring me a blind sheep, a broken sheep, the, the gift to God. If you brought God a sheep, which was the sacrifice for his sin, you had to be perfect without blemish. You had to be the best one you had. Amen. Right? And they were bringing God the worst they had. God said, it's not acceptable. So when you stand up here and you say, okay, God, I don't really want to worship you, and I guess I'll thank you anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm really hurting because it's all about me. I know the whole universe has stopped to see me. What's going on in my life today? But God, I'm going to worship you anyway. That is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Everybody say, that is not acceptable. That is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. God stands up there and that, that's not acceptable sacrifice to me. When you come before a king, you enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving in your heart. You enter into his courts with praise. Before you go before the great king, you make sure that you've got a grateful, thankful heart and you've remembered every good and perfect thing that he's done in your life. That way when you go into the king's presence, you're bringing a sacrifice of thanksgiving that Amen. is acceptable in him. You've realized in the midst of your pain that God is still good. And you remember because you're giving thanks of everything and every battle you've ever been through that you forget in the middle of your service that he's always, always, always brought you out. Amen. And he'll bring you out now. And that's why you can give thanks to him. But if you sit there and you don't, you just look at the circumstances. You'll stay there in that depressed state. And let me tell you something, all the doctors got to use a pill. And it don't. The only reason it works is it numbs your feelings down to where you just can't feel. That's anymore. right. That's, that's right. right. That's it. That's right. Your thought life, you're responsible for what you think. That's I'm right. I'm responsible for what I think. And when you're depressed, it always goes back to what you think. That's right. What you're thinking about. And I guarantee you're not thinking about God and His goodness. You're not giving praise. You're not being thankful. You're lying. You're complaining. You're murmuring. And go look at word, that word murmuring. Go back to the Old Testament and find out what God did for murmurers. He don't like it. Everybody say, we need to know God. We, we need to know God. We sometimes that I, I wonder about the people who wrote because they don't want to know God very well. God is not just easy going about a lot of stuff. There's things God likes and there's things he hates. How do you know God hates stuff? The Bible says these, these six things God did all right. And the seventh one he hates. He said they're an abomination to me. And there are things we do. But we just expect he's just going to grin and bear it. God will destroy us. He loves us. But he is not pleased. Let me tell you something. You want him pleased. Everybody say, I want him pleased. I want him pleased. Want him pleased. Want him pleased. Colossians. 315, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Amen. How many believe God not wants you to thank him? Amen. 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 Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, you know what a praise to God is? The fruits of lips that acknowledge his name. And when you acknowledge his name, you're going to give thanks. When you acknowledge all the good things he's done, you're going to come with a thankful heart. Psalm 104. We sing this one all the time, don't we? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Amen. 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 How do you enter his gates? Thanksgiving. Now, I don't, I don't know much. You know, I'm just an old country boy, but it seems like if there's gates... You got to get through the gate. Mm -hmm. God just told you how to get through His gate. Yeah. Thanksgiving is the key. Amen. Now you want to go a little deeper. You got to get into praise. Now we'll get into all the stuff about worship and praise, but we're not talking about that this morning. We're talking about your key to victory here. We're talking Amen. about a warfare. Amen. You know, coming out of where you're at. Because I'm gonna tell you something. When you really get to the place where you really begin to thank God, and you really begin to get yourself happy. The enemy will flee from you. 
He don't want to hang around that. That's not his atmosphere. His atmosphere is you alone in your misery. Amen. That is the atmosphere of heaven. This is all. That's right. It's depressing. When you feel that depression and everything, all, all that comes from, you know the enemy has moved into your atmosphere. He can't stand the atmosphere of true praise and true worship. Amen? Amen. That's right. 2 Corinthians 2.14 But thanks be to God who in Christ Jesus always, everybody said always, always. leads us in triumphal procession <laughs> and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Why is the devil so intent on depressing his church? So that we can't spread the fragrance of him. People want to be around joyful people. Amen. People want to be around grateful people. True. They want to be around thankful people, happy people. They want to be around them. They want to know. Because most of the world don't live that way. The guy that sticks out in the crowd is the one that's smiling. Because look around you, most people aren't. Not even in church. You know, I don't see anybody smiling that way. Right? <laughs> but praise God, I love you anyway. Philippians 4 6. Do not be anxious about anything. That's a command, by the way. Everybody say, That's a command. That's a command. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Why would I see it? Because you brought your petition to God. A petition is something you've thought about. A petition usually is something you've written out. A petition is when you got really serious and you went through the Word of God and you got where God had promised it to you and you take that petition before God and you make a supplication. You've written it out and you say, Father God, according to your Word, when well, you cannot lie. It says, this belongs to me. And the enemy has taken it from me. The enemy has stolen it from me. The enemy don't want me to have it. But God, according to your word, and I petition you now, according to what you have said, you the God who cannot lie, I bring you my petition and supplication. And since I have, and since I have your word, Lord, I now thank you, Father. For I know that you already do all the things before I even wrote this petition out. And I know that I have the answer. And so I begin to give you thanks, and I begin to give you praise. There's a lot of confusion years ago in charismatic church about should you ask God more than one time? Y'all remember that? You only ask God one time. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you do bring your petition before God, and you've gotten God's word for it, you begin to give thanks, and you begin to praise God, then you're pretty much in confidence that you already have the thing, and you're not looking for your eyes to tell you that you got it. You're looking at his word that says you have it. And when you begin to give thanks, you want to speed up that those windows of heaven. Begin to give thanks. If I say, give thanks. Thank you. Give thanks. You don't have to wait till you cut that throat, that turkey potion to give thanks. You can thank God right now. You can thank God right now. Every day. Colossians 4 2 continue steadfastly in prayer, <clears throat> being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Man, God has a lot to say about thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks, 1 Chronicles 16 8, 8, 16 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 95 1 through 3. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Is he present here? Amen. Yes. yes. Is he present everywhere? Yes. 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 So that means pretty much a lot of your time should be spent thanking him. And the more thankful you are, the more you're aware that he is present. Amen. 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 There's something just wonderful about giving thanks to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king 
above all gods with a little g. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Give thanks. Psalm 95, 2. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. We just read this a while ago. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Notice it said a noise. There's a lot of noise in the world. Not all of them are joyful. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good you sing. I tell them a joyful noise sounds good. Amen. It does. Something about a person that's full of joy. Just full of joy. You know, it is that that's a that's a great sounding noise. A joyful noise. God's the one who said it. First Chronicles 1634. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. Psalm 717, I will give thanks to the Lord, the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Notice he said, I will. Will is a very powerful thing. You have to will to be a, a person who's thankful. Yes. You have to will during your day, not to let your mind think about all your problems, Amen. And all the things going wrong. And all the things that you don't have. And all the things that are not this. And this person's not doing that. And I alone, Lord, am the one that does it all. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. When you get to think about that, not only are you letting the devil just run around in your mind, you're just one stupid. Amen. It ain't just you. You're not the only one doing anything. You're not the only one. You're not by yourself. I don't know what a hard slide to do without me. We probably do. We don't want to do without you. We love you. We need you. You do a great amount of things. But you're not the only one doing it. If you think you are, just come here and try to have church by yourself sometimes. Try and judge by yourself. Not be so. I just be God. You think he said Jesus just for you? I don't think they told that. That's not true. He sent him for that multitude that's going to be in heaven. That he'd be the firstborn among many. Right. He didn't come for just one. He came for me. I get to be part of me. Amen. Yes, he loves you. Yes, in his heart, he'd have probably done it just for you. But he didn't come just for you. You remember the problem with your depression is because you think about just you. You cannot be depressed and think about God. The Bible said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. You know I mean? It's hard to keep your mind on God unless you're doing one thing. Thank you. When you begin to thank God, it helps your mind think about God. And when your mind is lifted up, what did King David say? I will lift up my eyes from whence, to the hills from whence cometh my strength. What that, what, was David looking at mountains? No, he was saying, I'm looking at God. Get my eyes off all the stuff that's going on in my life and I'm looking at God. Because that's where my strength comes from. That's where my victory is at. I'm down here looking at this problem, diagnosing the problem. Right? Aren't you tired of being depressed yet? Somebody said, I'm tired of being unhappy. I'm tired of being depressed. Amen. Psalm 69 30. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Don Potter said one time, and I'm waiting for him to remember this. I remember hearing old tape. I never met Don Potter. <clears throat> but he said he was a worship leader in this large church, good church, nothing wrong with the church. And he was he was worshiping, but he said something in his heart was, was dying. He was 
something was missing. What the, he didn't blame the church. He said it was a good church. He didn't blame the worship team. He didn't blame the people who was around him. Something inside of him was just out of him. And he, you know, his worship had got to a place where it was just by rote. You know, just going through the motions. You know, we go through the motions, can't we? Yes. You grab a flag. We do all the motion. We look good, but it don't mean you worship. It just looks good. Remember, all the sacrifice has to be acceptable. All right? Has to be acceptable to him. So he said he leads to worship one Sunday. He got done. And he looked at everybody and he said, I'm done. He said, they thought I meant that I was done leading worship that Sunday. He said, no, I was done. And he said, I went home and I faced the wall. And I said, God, something is not right. What do I do? God said, I want you to sing. Sing to who? God said, sing to me for a while. Just sing to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, I would sit in there in my bedroom, facing the wall, and I began to sing to God. And he said, then I found that there were other people like me, and we, that we began to come together in my home, and we began to just sing to God. We don't sing it for anyone else. We just sing to God. They were given sacrifice except God. Remember, remember what I said? Sing a song. It ain't about you standing up here and getting entertained with us or about that. I mean, we're not against worship. We love worship. We're glad we got a worship leader. We're glad we got a great worship team. Not about that. But sometimes you, alone in your home, just you and God, sing a song to Him. Amen. Amen. He don't care how you sound. Some people care how you sound. God don't. I promise you, He never told anybody you're out of key. Don Harper said, he asked me, I said, who's your favorite singer? He said, God said, you are. I mean, no day anybody who asked God who the favorite singer is, God can say, you are. And God don't lie. When you sing to him out of the heart of thanksgiving, out of love, out of praise, he loves that song. Amen. Amen. He loves it. Yes, he does. And guess what? It gets you off you. Yes. It gets you off you. See, what Don Paul went through is he just got burned out. See, it's hard to, to worship God when you're dependent on everybody else worshiping him with you. Right. It'll wear you out. It's hard to preach if, you, if you're dependent on people to receive what you got. Right? They'll wear you out. But see, when it's done for God and for him alone, it becomes easy. That's what the heart of worship is. That's what the heart of being a Christian is. It's doing it for God. It's doing it because you love Him. And you're full of thanksgiving. You begin to remember. I keep going back to this. You remember how thankful you were when you first got born again? True. You didn't have all these rules and regulations and stipulations. You didn't have to jump through all these whole hoops and stuff that man said to prove that you were saved. You just knew in your heart that you were all once on your way to hell, but God had saved you. That's all you really knew. But man had filled you with joy and unspeakable and full of glory. And you just walked around talking to him and thanking him, everything. All this stuff that you had never seen before just opened up before your eyes and you were full of thanksgiving. Man, God is beautiful out here. This is beautiful sight. Lord, thank you. That is awesome. Lord, you make that mountain. Look at that. It's beautiful. Thank you, Lord. You're just full of thanksgiving all the time. The devil wants to press you and steal that from you. He wants to steal your joy. And if you don't find it, he will. And he won't get it back. He is not going to feel sorry for you. You need to get this one thing in your head. The devil does not feel sorry for you. Ever. I'm going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. Most people don't feel sorry for you. They just don't. And if they do, it's just simply, simply as I feel bad about your situation. Way you mentioned the word empathy. You know the difference between sympathy and empathy? Anybody know? Sympathy is I feel bad for you. Empathy is I feel bad enough I'm going to do something. Yes. Amen. That's the difference. 
First Timothy 2 1. <clears throat> First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercession, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. Did you notice he said thanksgivings for all people? Begin to thank God for the people in your life. Begin to thank God for your spouse. And let me, get, let me tell you a secret. Y'all may, y'all, some of that one like a lot of people may with this one. It's wonderful that you say all that wonderful stuff about your husband or your wife on Facebook. But that's more for you than them. Now get along in the room and look them in the eye and tell them that. You know why you do it on Facebook? Because it's hard for you to look them in the eye and tell them how much you love them. So you do it through something totally impersonal. Let me tell you something. I'm never going to tell you on Facebook how much I love this woman. That's none of your business. She, I'm going to tell her how much I love her and how much I appreciate her and how thankful I am for her and that the smartest thing this dumb old boy I ever did when he was young, like some of these young boys and young girls here, I pray God give me a good wife. Yeah. I don't know why. I was the dumbest. I, I'm telling you, I was dumb. I, I, I didn't have sense enough to get out of the way. But somehow God put a grace in my heart when I was very young, probably just turned a teenager, that I, I asked God for that. I remember the day, I remember the place I asked for. And God granted that petition. Some of you have never prayed about your spouse. Now they're your spouse now. You need to start praying now. You probably have. When you, you know, there's young kids in here. All you young boys, wake up, look at me for just one second. All you young girls, if you're smart, if you're very smart, you will start right now, every day, praying God gives you a spouse he has prepared for all of eternity. Amen. It will bring joy to your heart. So you're thankful for them. Thank them for the, how good they are to you. And don't make it just a Facebook post. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you want the world to know, that's fine. I just don't like that. But don't do it on Facebook and then not dare sit down and tell them face that's to face right. and hold them hand while you tell them that. That's true. Because that makes you think it's more about you than them. That's right. I want to be seen as this loving, wonderful person. I want everybody to know how to love my spouse. That's selfish. There's nothing wrong with you doing it on Facebook. Just make sure you do it to them. Amen. Make Amen. Make sure you do it to them. Now, 32 things. I got the website if you want to look it up. This is a secular website. Matter of fact, the person opens up by saying, I'm not a spiritual person. 